there's magic in Mississippi that a lot of Southern or other American places don't have. I don't think it's as hard as it used to be, but I think life is still difficult for a lot of queer people in Mississippi. Most people are fearful of things that they don't understand. I just fell in love with the queer community when I moved to Mississippi. They're so funny and resilient and resourceful. But you had to know people to, to get into it. So once you met someone, you were able to hang out. They would meet at bars. They would have private house parties. They would go on trips to Memphis or other places. But if you didn't have an in, I think it could be really alienating. I think that's how the queer community survived for such a long time. There's an amazing network of people in this state. Three, two, one. We see our role as an incubator. We're always happy if something takes, you know? So, I mean, we, we, what we wanted was more permanent spaces for LGBTQ folks to feel comfortable, feel included, feel visible. Um, and dance parties seem like a good mix. It's something we always joked about. I mean, the University of Mississippi has a reputation as a party school. So we said, we'll just throw the best parties. We'll have the biggest, coolest parties. We're here, we're queer, we're more fun. Come hang out with us. And that's kind of how it's worked. At the end of the day, like, that's why I think that it shouldn't matter if you're gay or straight. I mean, it doesn't matter. Just hang out with people, get to know people, get to know their parents. I mean, we're not so different, and I hate that the isolation of being gay is a thing, because it shouldn't be. It should be super easy. Like, you're just dudes playing video games. You're just, like, dudes throwing a ball. I really um, felt like I was different from all of the um, the little girls that were um, in my, in my grade, I don't know why, I just felt very different. Before I was around other gay people, I wasn't able to fully understand my identity, whether sexual and gender identity. I never got to claim manlyhood because I thought I had no entitlement to it because I was gay. I, I didn't feel like I could claim it, so I ignored it because I was too respectful of other boys. I was like, they don't want me around, so I can't be around. So I didn't get to play sports. I didn't allow myself to play sports. And, and I think that's the sad part is that like, there's a lot of things that I think the shame does to you. It tells you what careers you think you can do. It tells you who you can be around, not because of what you're capable of or because of what you'll do. It's because of what you, what you perceive other people think of the community. I got made fun of for being gay my whole life, even before I um, knew what it meant. My, my dad had lived in the same town his whole life. And so um, I've lived in that town my whole life too. And it's really hard going back and seeing everything because nothing has changed really. It's just a lot to go home to. I was very cut off from the world. I was very alone. And that was like a self done thing was I isolated myself from my family. I isolated myself from my friends because of cultural expectation of maybe not being accepted. I feel like you lose out on a lot of social development, but also um, you lose out on building relationships with your family. It's like whenever you hear them talking about people that look like you, you kind of just, you know, get into this shell because I didn't feel comfortable around them because I saw them judge people that I wanted to be or that I honestly that I was. And nothing's worse than getting a silent treatment from your mom. Like she had maybe her suspicions led her to um, go through my cell phone and just look to see what I was doing and how I was interacting with um, people because of these suspicions that she had. And um, when she found that out, she was um, she was extremely hurt by it. I had a uh, whole summer to tell my parents that I was gay before my boyfriend was coming to visit. So um, I waited for the moment. I thought it, I'd be in like a smoky bar with my dad and like, we would just be sitting and like having a beer and I, I would just tell him. I would just like be like, yeah, so like I'm dating this guy. He's really, he's okay. Um, so like a week passed, didn't have the courage. Two weeks passed, didn't have the courage. We were going to pick him up from the airport in San Francisco. And I had to say it because they're about to meet him. And um, thank God my dad didn't drive us off the bridge. Um, because I literally just like let it out. My parents were in the car and I was like, so, you know, we're picking up my boyfriend, right? And Matt, I was like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, and um, they handled it really well, you know? And I just was just like, it's fine. And yeah, my parents were super great. Being gay is still tough, even though I found all this freedom. You know what, I just read something actually too. Um, 
how to save your life, how we fight for our lives by Saeed Jones. And he was talking about how every gay person can remember the first time they were called a faggot. And I remember the first time it was in seventh grade whenever I wouldn't give somebody the answer to homework. There's a crassness and bravery in the South where they will say it to your face, which is kind of nice, but they, sometimes they won't. They'll, they'll say it, but they'll say it from when they're in a car and they're moving and they say it out the window. You know, I was like, well, yeah, I'm the faggot. Yeah, well, you are, I don't know. You're very courageous, aren't you? Yeah. Like living here, you have to navigate spaces like based on your identity, I guess. It's like, I don't want to go into like a hardware store. <laughs> I don't want to go get my oil changed because I'm afraid to be around a bunch of men. It was like always having camouflage. Like you always adapt, like you, you bring your voice down, you walk differently, you wear a hoodie to look like you fit in with an alternative crowd. I was emo for the longest time because it just was easier because they were weird art kids. And I just was like, cool, I can blend them. Like I had long hair and I was weird, so cool. I think when you're part of a majority, you see your experience and your life reflected back to you constantly. When you're not part of that majority, you're constantly feeling like your life and your experiences are not reflected or not the norm, maybe are not important, maybe don't exist in other people's imaginations. But when you get it, when you get to a space that explicitly recognizes who you are and all your queer, wonderful glory, all your different minorities in space, you feel this weight lift from you in a particular way. Um, and I think it's, unless you've been through that, it's hard to understand why it's there. Now it's kind of weird to see the shift of younger college students that are gay going out and being very openly gay. And I'm really proud about it. Like they feel like they don't need a gay bar anymore, which is actually like exciting. Um, it's something that, I don't know. It's very strange, it's new. Um, and I'm, I'm glad, like, but I mean, also, I feel like that generation probably is more accepting in general too. So they're all, they're all relaxed and more comfortable, which I'm so excited to see. I mean, it's gonna get better and better and better. So when I got here, wow, it was like freedom. It was like let freedom ring. It was like, I can be who I wanna be. I don't have to put my changing clothes in my book bag and go to school and change into what I actually feel comfortable wearing versus what my mom wants to see me leave the house wearing. And that's what those spaces do. When you, when you go there and you discover that there are people like you who have experienced the world in a different way and they like you for who you are and that's in spite of it, it really takes that weight off your shoulders. Code Pink is important to people that are new to the community or people that haven't really dove into the community or just the culture at all. A grad student at the university, Matt Kessler, approached us and said, hey, I know a lot of the people who were part of the documentary Small Town Gay Bar. And he said, how do y'all feel about kind of having a showing of the documentary as part of the conference and get some of the people who were in the documentary to kind of be part of a panel afterwards discussion? And we're like, that sounds great. And then he said, hey, while they're here, what if we had a drag show? I'm like, well, that's a cool idea. We don't have a drag place in Oxford, but let's see if we can find one. So we had the documentary showing at the Powerhouse, but they thought it wasn't maybe the best venue for the drag show. So we reached out to Lamar Lounge, which is now, I think, Gus's Fried Chicken. I can't believe it's been a couple of things since then. Um, and they agreed to have a drag show. So we just made a poster, put it all over town. But what was great about it was everybody showed up for this. It was such a novelty in Oxford to have a drag show that everyone came and it was the LGBTQ community, but it was also a lot of people just on campus who thought, hey, that sounds fun. The first Code Pink I went to, I think I was performing. So I kind of was going into it as like a circus performer. I think that's just like, I'm here to perform. So it's kind of easier. And then I think that, that's how I fell into Code Pink was performing. So it wasn't like from like a normal, like audience person going. Like I was just pumped to be there. Um, and all of those pictures, like I've never smiled so big in pictures before because I was just excited. So it's so nice to have like a watering hole so everyone can be like, oh, they exist. Or some people that go for the first time, they're like, oh my God, we do exist. I'm glad to give that, that space to people. And, and that, that's what Coping has always been about, was gay DJs, female DJs, black DJs, people that don't have stages, people that want to say something politically, we have it for you. Blake just being an older gay person that we have to look up to is, it's something that I think younger queer people are always gonna need. Confidence is new. Um, 
it, it's new. I mean, I was never really a confident person and I have a lot of self-worth issues. So that's what I try to teach like my younger friends is like I want them to be absolved as soon as possible. I, I really want them to feel like, I just don't want them to do what I did. I'm honestly just trying to instill courage, love, compassion, strength into these, these people that come. Like I just want them to go into the world and just feel better. I have an agenda to make the nation better and not just an individual better. I mean, I have to hope that what I'm doing will I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I just want the world to, to work, to function. Um, I want just everyone to just be where they're supposed to be. And I, and I hope we get it. And so what are you doing? <laughs> why do you do this? Why? I don't know why I do it. I'm just here. I'm just doing my best like everyone else. I'm just trying to throw a good party and make people better. <laughs> my agenda is honestly just the stuff I'm trying to learn. I'm just trying to love myself better, love the people around me better, teach people to be kind. That's all I want. That's all I want. It's not hard. It's so easy. I don't care what you drive. I don't care what your stupid purse is. I think your prints look cheesy. Louis Vuitton's ugly. You're so foolish. Just be better. Just be kind. That's all I want. For some people, it's bars. For some, it's bookstores. For some, it's it's parties or it's coffee shops or it's networking scenes. But when you're in those spaces and you see your life reflected back to you, you think, I'm not crazy, right? I'm not the only one in the world. There are other people like me and they're fabulous. And you start to get a sense that there's a lot more ways to be in the world than mainstream media has ever let us imagine. The more that happens, the easier it will be for the next generation. That's who matters. That's why I, I fight to make these spaces. So I'm gonna say, we are, and you all gonna say, love. But I want you all to say it like you're a warrior, yeah? So, we are! Love!